Anna was not familiar with this area and I knew it would be a challenge just for her to find them. I sent out a silent message in words in my mind without using my voice, addressing the baboon species and letting them know that I was coming. I didn't look around for any physical signs. After a few moments of that, I opened my eyes again and just allowed my body to move in the direction that I felt drawn to, almost like an internal sort of radar for baboon energy. And she found the truth. ask me how does science explain this I also think of the um, of how it must have been for people back in the 17th and 18th century and they used to see lightning but if you ask them um, uh, do you believe in electricity uh, they would have said no not at all I mean, they would have laughed at you and maybe what we're seeing now with Anna is is being back in the 17th century and seeing lightning. John is a founder leader of a worldwide movement to help connect people with their natural heritage. Since childhood, John was mentored in traditional native tracking skills and deep nature connection. You just stare into the footprint in, in a diffused, kind of relaxed way and just, in a certain sense, begin talking. Um, the way you need words, it's just sort of something starts to come. And then all of a sudden, out of the track comes a picture and your mind is filled with an image. And it's a very clear image and you couldn't have generated it yourself. Um, there's so much information in that one billionth of a second, even in the look on the face of the animal looking back at you. Now the University of Vermont in the United States has recently asked John to create a course in nature connectedness and awareness. It will be a whole new field of study. I also work with John around the world to reconnect people with nature and themselves. For a long time, John was the only person I could speak with about my ability to communicate with animals. where I really did a lot of research and discovered this whole field called interspecies communication. Mm. Meantime, continuing doing tracking and being out on trails and so on, by just opening my awareness and really softening my body and my mind, I would start to have more intuitive experiences. When it switched on strong when I was 19, there was no going back. Yeah. You know, and that was that experience that got me in so much trouble talking about publicly, you know, when I saw the silver lines for the first time and followed them right to the deer. Sometimes it's just suddenly like this line of light appears on the landscape and I just start following it. Um, and then it disappears. You know, it shows up long enough for me to know it's time to move. Um, and then I start moving. And at that point, the rest takes care of itself. My body wants to go that way. It wouldn't go any other way. 
and then I discover, oh, there's that nice fresh track again. I look at it and I recognize that individual track again. It's the same individual and I always have to laugh at myself. When you have that moment of reconnecting with the animal physically at the end of that trail, there's a moment of grace. I have to say, I get a little choked up each time, um, as I am right now, where I feel like, whoa, what a miracle uh, that we live in a world like this. You know, that, that this could be possible. And I always give thanks in those moments to my ancestors, to the Creator, uh, because that's what my elders told me. That's where it's coming from. And whether I understand that or not, it's, it's irrelevant. I just feel incredibly blessed in those moments. And I, I wish life could go on forever. Ah, the Kumai tells me that I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be and then a unique opportunity presented itself. In the course of my work, I had come across the story of Jörg Olsen, an ex-policeman turned conservationist. Jörg and his wife Karen set up the Jukani Predator Park. Here, many big cats rescued from bad zoos and canned hunting farms are offered a home and get lifetime care. Here has a remarkable relationship with his cats and he handles them in a way I have seldom seen before. suspicious and vicious. All he did was sit in his night shelter and snarl at anyone who came close to him. Six months in, and Yer was at a loss as to how to deal with this cat. That whole atmosphere there, there was a vibe of aggression and of, um, I hate you and I will kill you. And, you know, the one encounter I had with him, um, he sent me to hospital one bite, one week. Here, I thought, was the perfect case. If Anna could get this animal to change his behavior and become well-adjusted, then I would have no choice but to acknowledge that she was in dialogue with animals. It took me some time, however, to convince Yer to bring in Anna. He's a dangerous cat. He's very, very dangerous. Um, he's towards me and towards everybody else. In my opinion, the chances of an animal communicator changing that, um, it'll take a lot to convince me. Um, I honestly do not believe that an animal can talk to a human or communicate with a human. Um, I've had animals my whole life. Um, we give them commands, we give them instructions, and they do it as we habituate them, basically. Um, but I, I'm very skeptical to think that an animal like Diablo will communicate or can communicate with humans. Um, I am desperate, however. I do not want to lose him. I made sure that Anna had no information on Diablo or his history before she came to speak to the Black Leopard. I was nervous to see what would happen as this animal never let anyone near his night shelter without a lot of snarling and growling. But the minute he saw Anna, he calmed down and let her kneel right outside and look at him.
This beautiful black leopard that you've asked us to communicate with is very overawed by his new surroundings, having come from a very uh, cramped and stressful place for him. But this place has been provided for him, but he's been quite conditioned by a very unfortunate past. Um, he doesn't want much to do with humans as a result. He's immensely powerful, and I mean not just physically, which you well know and respect, but he's immensely powerful with uh, a wisdom and an energetic presence and personality that is far bigger than anyone has ever appreciated about him before. And he commands a certain amount of respect for that. Again, not in a needy way, but really just out of, um, by virtue of who he is as a being. There's a very particular thing about his name, uh, Diablo. He wants that name changed because he doesn't like the associations with it, the blackness, the darkness, the diabolical. And when asking him about his past before coming here, he shows concern for two young cubs that were next to him. He's asking what happened to them with a great sense of, of care and concern. We actually forgot about that. When we went to fetch him, there was so much excitement about bringing him back here. Um, it actually slipped my mind until she said, um, he asked about the two cubs. And then we've remembered there were two little young leopard cubs next door to him that came from Rustenburg and they were sort of semi-wild. They weren't hand yet. And it just slipped my mind. And when they talked about it, I couldn't believe, I, I actually, did believe it. I mean, then I really believed that they were communicating. I mean, she communicated with him, and when we spoke to her and she relayed all the information back to us, firstly, I didn't believe her. You know, what, uh, you know, it's things that anybody can think out, and you can think, you know. And then she said something about the cubs that was with him, that were with him. Um, and that changed this whole thing because now all of a sudden, you know, that's something that she didn't know about. And I've also reassured him that you have no demands of him here, that you're quite happy to um, not make any physical demands of him or any expectations for display or interaction, that you're really willing to let him be how he wants to be. And that's given him an enormous sense of relief. Yeah. And having told him that has for the first time made him actually, uh, actually genuinely interested and in now exploring a bit further. Now that he feels that he's not being asked to come out more, he's genuinely interested in being relaxed enough to have a natural curiosity come out and to actually expand his horizons a bit. And Jörg was just stunned when the black leopard walked out of his night shelter into the larger enclosure later in the afternoon. In the six months that the cat had been here, Jörg had never seen him out of the night shelter. He then decided to rename the leopard spirit. We told him that same afternoon that we're not going to call him Diablo anymore. Um, and we understand and we agree with that the diabolical side of it. That's not what he is to us. Um, and we'd like to change his name to Spirit. As I walked to him, I thought, listen, he asked about the two young leopards. And I thought, well, I'm here now, there's nobody else here. I'm not going to look like a fool if something, if I, if he ignores me. Um, I'll tell him what, what happened to those leopards. And I told, and as I called him and I said, Spirit, and he was looking at me, he was lying like that. I said, with regard to the two little leopards, I just want to assure you, and I want to tell you that they're safe. And I couldn't help it. I just said to him, wow, you're beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that's moy. That's moy. And he gave me that, oh. And I thought, what's happening here? And I said to him, you understand what I'm telling you if I say to you that you're the most stunning cat? Oh. And I spoke to him and he answered me about 19 times. And he just sat there and he was totally relaxed. Um, it's the first time, it's the first time since we had him that I felt at ease with him. I felt that he was relaxed and he understood me. It was, to say that, I don't know what it feels like for him. For me, it was the most amazing moment. Later that afternoon, 
Anna came back to check up on Spirit and to see how he was doing. I'm asking him now about how he experienced the communication from Jochen through the fence. And he said it's the first time that someone has directly expressed to him verbally um, appreciation for who he really is, not how they see him to be. And that really surprised him. <laughs> he shows me an image of literally stopping in his tracks. Thy surprise at that sense of just this wall of appreciation coming towards him. He is so relieved that nothing's being demanded of him here. He's just so relieved. It's like this weight is lifted from his shoulders. <laughs> and when he was grunting back, he said he was saying thank you for the thank yous. So of each thank you he was getting, he was saying thank you back. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say about that feedback? I think we'll talk about it this a bit later. I can't believe this. So we'll talk about this later. It's unbelievable. I'm overwhelmed. It's two different animals. It's two totally, totally different personalities. We had a snarling cat, angry at everything, um, upset about being here, uh, hating humans, hating us for having him here, um, you know, ready to kill in an instant. To this relaxed, black leopard that's lying on top of his log in his shelter is this attitude of you, you recognize me for who I am now and it's amazing to to talk to him and get the talking and get him to talk back to us. Jach and Karen attended Anna's workshop on animal communication and now use it regularly with all their animals. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it changed my whole life um, and spirit and animal communication has taught me you know, when I work with, with my other lions, um, the reactions you get, the, the communication you get back, the feelings you get. Um, you know, you get, sometimes you get lions or queenie, for instance, that's unhappy with something that happened. And I'm not sitting out there wondering what's wrong with her. She tells me, and I can correct it, and I can make her happy because she is in my, I have to look after her, I've got to make her happy. Um, it changed the whole family.